Spoiler Dan One, and welcome to my channel. I'm currently building the Flying Dutchman. This is part one of a series that will encompass the entire build of this ship. So I hope you'll follow along. In today's episode, I'm going to cover getting started, and you can see I've got a good start on it. But more importantly, is going through the manual and uh, the parts list and try to get ready to build this ship. If you decide to build a ship like this, it takes a little bit of organizational skills and that's not my strength, but the more I build ships, the better I get at it. So let me show you the steps that I took that I could get to this point. The written instructions are in multiple languages, so they're marked. So really on this page, all I need is this. So I'm thinking of taking this to my copy machine and just copying what I need and it'll eliminate a lot of this bulk. Same thing on the parts sheet because it's multiple languages, to help me zone in on what the item is, I just highlighted it in yellow. That's being helpful. I'm beginning to try and organize my build, and that's getting things in order. Now, I do like the instructions because they, they go alphabetically, starting with A, and as you've already seen, they're pictorial. For about three quarters of the way back, because you will need to identify the parts by number. The parts themselves on the placards have no numbers on them. So I've gone through and marked them all. Here's the hull set up and I've marked A2, A3, and they're all in numerical order. A1, I didn't bother marking because it's kind of obvious what it is. So that was my first step, was to go through all the placards and mark either on or right next to the item. Some are, are pretty small. Some you won't need to mark on it. For instance, this is a brass panel. And what I did is I just put it in a little baggie and marked it with the corresponding numbers that the parts are. I'm using a lot of these. I found them on Amazon. You can get a uh, hundred of them, uh, pretty inexpensive. And they have the little panel you can write on that on the other side, it's see-through. Here's an example on this uh, placard number 11. There's a lot of small parts. I did not necessarily write the part number on each item. I made sure I wrote it next to it. Uh, and I wrote very faintly with a pencil on some of them. Here's a close up and you can see in pencil, I wrote a faint number of what it is. And this is actually MT65, but I think once I find it, I'll know it's 65. I won't pop these out until I actually need them or very close to need them. In addition to marking the parts lightly with pencil, as a placard gets used and there's just a few parts left in it, I will transfer those to bags. So here's all the Ds. Here's some E parts. That's how I will keep my parts in order using these little baggies. I will put them in alphabetical order and it should make it easy to find the parts. Here's a little hint because a lot of these, they were mixed together. And this is not a good example, but it's the only one I have left to do. There's a few things mixed in here and I was trying to pull them out with my fingers, which was kind of a pain. Then I tried tweezers, well that was a pain. Then I came up with this idea. This is painter's tape. I just double it over so it's all sticky and then I can just kind of push it in there and pull all those out and then knock them off. Here's another example. These were all together in one of these small trays. They were hard to distinguish from one another until you take them out and obviously one is shorter. So I'm separating these, bagging them, and then I write on the bag what's inside. Now this I've not determined the part number yet. But once I determine the part number, I will put it on the bag also. I pretty much pre-stain everything. And in the staining of these, my pencil marks don't show through. So I had to mark the part numbers where they're laying to dry. There is a step not shown until about halfway through the manual. And it's where you bevel off the edges of both the front and the rear of these framing members and 
you do it with a hand file, but I'm going to take my uh, miniature sander and I'm going to pre-bevel these, maybe not all the way, but get some of the edges off so I don't have as much work to do when I get to this point. I'm starting to insert these as I finish filing it off because it needs to dry a little bit between each one. And that's because these are pretty flexible in here and it needs to be square. So whether you use a large square or like I have a very small square, once you get this glue and set in place, you need to square it up and then let it dry for a little bit before you put it in the next one or at least don't bump it because this has got a lot of play in it. They suggest white glue for this. I'm using wood glue, which has a little bit of a yellow tint to it. See, I don't know whether I should square it up to the front or to the back. I think I'm gonna to go towards the back because that's where the play is because I'll be sanding and pushing that direction. So there it is square. And now if I let that dry a little bit while I file down the next one that goes in place, I should be good to go. Here are all the ribs in place. I, I call them bones of the ship. I was not happy with how wobbly they were. Now that they're glued in place, they're stable, but it made it a little difficult to get them into that square position and to hold that position. I do think I have them uh, square and some of them I think are tilting but I think I can pull them together if, if I need to if there's if the tilt's a little off but it was hard to do the square and then the top so it wasn't tilted. What I would do if I had it to do over again and I had the time, I think I would build a spacer on both sides and put a spacer in here to hold them in place. I'm sure each one of these are the exact same increment. So that might be something for someone out there to consider doing. Just measure that space and make yourself a few blocks and put those blocks in there until it dries. That's the end of part one of my Building the Flying Dutchman. Part two will come up pretty quick. I've got to do some side work. Uh, there's a lot of metal parts on this particular ship, so I'm going to age them using a copper leaf technique and then age that copper leaf. I'll show you some of that in part two, so stay tuned for that. It'll be posted in the next couple of days or so. This is Boiler Dan 1, as always. Thanks for watching.